Hey everybody, today's episode is a two-parter. We get executive decision and we get the Glimmer Man. This is Karate Corner and this is Red Eye Reviews. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 8 of Karate Corner. Today we're going to watch the movie Executive Decision. You won't find Seagal's name in the opening credits, but I mean that's okay, he's a big superstar, right? I'm sure his name will appear somewhere else. In this movie, our boy plays Lieutenant Colonel Austin Travis, big time soldier, looking for some nerve gas and stuff. I mean that's a chip shot to our boy. It's empty. Alright, shake it off, shake it off. A lot of movie left, Steven. All right, so our plot's a pretty stereotypical Seagal movie. High-profile guy gets kidnapped. It's not that we can't... Oh, fuck. Is that Kurt Russell? Dude, Steve, Kurt Russell... Kurt Russell's in this movie. And Halle Berry's in this movie? Dude, Steven, this is not... This isn't looking good for us, man. We're about to get up-acted hard. It's like a real blockbuster, man. Why didn't you tell me? So, I mean, yeah, they're on a plane and they're terrorists and stuff. That's pretty standard. We, it's all right. We can still save this movie. You just have to get on the plane. If you can get on the plane and you can leave all the other actors off the plane, we have a chance. I'd like to welcome you on board, Senator Mavros. Yeah, no problem. We've dealt with senators, like, in half his movies. We're going to be fine. So the terrorists take over the plane, kidnap a senator. I'm going to assume they have that nerve gas that wasn't in the first place, probably on the plane. There he is. There's our sharp-dressed man. Yeah, that's right. Walk right past him. We don't need that negative juju. We're trying to upstage a movie. All right, so we're going to get airborne, and then the plan is we all get on the plane. We keep Kurt Russell on this plane. How is he supposed to bring that tombstone energy if he's not even in the movie? But, but I stay here on this airplane, right? That's correct. <laughs> he's so dumb. He doesn't even know what's about to happen. Stephen, what are you doing? You can't outact him one to one, bro. You don't stand a chance. You say so. Ugh, he's showing some skin. He always shows skin in his movies. That's a cheap shot. We all know Steven's out of shape. That's okay. That set us back a little bit. But as long as we get on the plane and we leave him here, that's the plan. Don't forget it. Don't let him Jedi mind trick you. You're on the wrong side of the hatch. Steven, no. Oh, Steven. Walk it off. Walk it off. You're fine. We tried. We, we gave it our best. We gave it our best. Those are A-listers in there, man. There's no shame in that, okay? We did our best. There's no shame in that. There's too much plot for us anyways. We, that's too complicated. We'd have to read our script a lot more. I know it'll cheer you up. We have time for another movie, huh? What's the next movie you're in? Is it The Glimmer Man? Is it basically if the movie Seven and Lethal Weapon had a baby? And then that baby forgot how to read or remember stuff? That sounds great. That's more our speed. Let's go watch that. See, I knew you'd bounce back. Look at you with your ponytail again. You got some beads on this? Those are some good looking beads. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. You know, the way I work is uh, I just kind of like to solve the case. I don't really care who gets the credit. <laughs> Ad libbing already. Uh, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so proud. So Seagal gets a call. There's a high school student holding a room full of kids hostage. But Seagal's an expert hostage negotiator, okay? Show him that, that slick move you got. Come on over. Step over to the window and look at me. <laughs> Bam. See? It's already in the room. Just like that. It's science. See that right there? That's what you call talent. Who else other than Seagal could tackle a kid at maybe one mile an hour? Launch him effortlessly across this gap? To crash into a window angled above you and away. I think that deserves a golf clap. I love you too. And then that kid's dad shows up and thanks Seagal. Well, I sincerely hope that if there's ever anything I can do for you. Okay, if this guy isn't the bad guy, bravo. You got me. I'm in charge of Mr. Derville's security. Oh. Could have fooled me. I kind of thought you were an attorney. Listen, um. Yeah, that's right. Get him, Seagal. Get him. Now get your ugly white ass out of here. Don't come back. Yeah, my boy just got done fighting Kurt Russell. You don't stand a chance, random little bald guy. Detective Cole's not gonna cooperate. Yeah, he doesn't cooperate with bad guys, okay? Also, do you live in a museum? Cause that looks awful lot like a museum. See fool! Oh no, I walk in. 
Sigal, you kind of look like you didn't expect him to speak Chinese back. Might need more than one lesson on Duolingo. <laughs> oh, yeah, just put this underneath your tongue. It's perfect for allergies. Clear your right under. What is this? Oh, it's just a little bit of powdered deer penis. Okay, so I was super curious and I actually Googled powdered deer penis. Incognito mode. Incognito mode. I'm not, I'm not crazy. And it's basically old school Chinese Viagra. Now, I'm not a cop, but slipping your partner Chinese Viagra gotta be a trip to HR. Minimum. Now turn around, put your goddamn hands up on the car. So sometime later, they go to bust these guys who are breaking into a car, but it turns out to be a trap from the Russian mob. And his partner would help him fight, but he's a little lightheaded from his newfound boner. So he gets dealt with. <laughs> but thankfully, Seagal's a shopper of that store in the mall that sells, like, lipstick tasers and soda can knives and stuff. And he handles the situation. It's not that I can't fight. I'm not supposed to. It's against my religion, you know. Oh, great. I'm a Buddhist. Yeah. Okay, we have to freeze it for a story time real quick. So Steven Seagal wanted to change a scene in this movie where he kills the main bad guy because due to his spiritual beliefs, newfound spiritual beliefs, Seagal didn't want to kill villains in his movies anymore. And the guy who plays the bad guy convinced him that if his character were to be killed, he would actually get reincarnated and could redeem himself. Seagal agreed to this, the scene was filmed and written, and then a few months later, Seagal went, no, 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 can he survive it? I don't, this doesn't feel good. So they actually brought in, they had to redub lines and stuff, but it never was used. But yeah, what a roller coaster. This guy, he speaks Chinese, he, he dresses like a monk. Yeah, bro, welcome to the channel. Seagal's a weird guy, but God damn it, is he entertaining. Task Force Campbell. Campbell, I don't want to tell you how to live your life, but like, if you sit a few feet to your left, the projector's not going to blind you as much. Just a suggestion. Philly, do me a favor. Give me copies of these blood paintings on the walls and this particular stack of crime scene photos. Send them out to every site, ward, and prison throughout the United States. Also, this scene looks and sounds like a script reading. So real quick, the really small amount of plot this movie has, it's basically this murderer who goes around killing people, then he hangs them up like a crucifix. It's kind of gruesome. But the most previous person was actually Seagal's ex-wife. So he's about to deliver the devastating news, and I'm sure it's heart-wrenching. Yeah, it's been another killing. Steven, can we get a little bit more emotion out of you? He killed Ellen and her husband. I gotta go tell my kids that their mother is dead. I think he's making it personal, you know? Oscar-worthy, bro. You should have got Oscar. God, I would love to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. So because it was Seagal's ex-wife who was killed, fingers are now pointed back at him. Thankfully, he plays it super cool. Totally not suspicious. The prints on the body. Planted. So Seagal goes and meets with his old boss from the CIA to try to find out, like, who's involved with this killing stuff. Why don't you and I take your little sensitive ponytail and your little sissy beads and get out of here, okay? I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> And of course, his boss is played by Brian Cox. Why wouldn't it be? Brian has this amazing habit of showing up two-thirds of the way through a movie, getting a paycheck, and peacing out. I pure hate you, but God damn it, do I respect you. And this is a very important conversation. So how does he behave? Like a child at an IHOP. They're uh, getting kind of cranky about where we get our cool work. Certainly do the best I can. And like a true gentleman, he sticks his date with the bill. If you ever pull that shit with me again, I'll kill you. I should not have said that. And this is just my own pet peeve, but how is everybody good at fighting in these movies? Like, there's not one guy whose hobby's like fishing or something. Grab a stick and twist it! Oh my god! Hey, we haven't seen his partner in a while. I wonder what he's doing. I'm gonna go suck on some deer penis. I'll be all right. I know it seems like I took that clip out of context, but I promise you, I didn't. Yeah, we're all just as confused as this lady. But she is useful because she tells them who the murderer is and how he used to be in the insane asylum. And Steve Isgall finds the dude in like 10 minutes. He picks one church, finds him at the church. Good thing our guy's super smooth and he doesn't blow his cover immediately. Oh wait, no, he does immediately. All right, I'm going to do my best to catch you up on the plot, because to be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. So this guy kills all these people, but he claims God tells him to kill these people. But then he says this. I want you to know I didn't hurt her. I only killed who I was told to kill. And it confirms to Steven that a couple of the killings look like professional killings disguised as his killings to, like, get away with it. 
I don't know. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. The time of my last confession was six months ago. Also, I know this is supposed to be a serious moment, but if God was telling you to kill people, wouldn't you go to confession more than twice a year? Don't Man, it's a good thing you're not Catholic. But then, like, the police chief is like, you kill them to cover your own tracks. Because we looked into your past and we couldn't find anything. You're like a ghost. It's like, wait, but didn't you hire him? Did he not have, like, a resume? Do you not do background checks on cops? Anyways, they decide to give him a lie detector test. Did you shoot Christopher Maynard? Yes. Have you ever killed anyone? Yes. Have you ever killed anyone outside of police duty? Yeah, these two guys are like the guys in a meeting that don't actually know what anybody's talking about, but they just make a comment so their boss thinks they're doing work. Are you a cop? Do you have hair? Well, I've never seen anything like this. Everything reads true. You've never seen anybody be truthful before? I've never seen anything like this. He was honest with us. It's possible, but you'd have to have total control over your emotions. Wait, do people not normally have control of their own emotions? Maybe we ought to be checking into your credentials over Stevens. And while standing in front of the world's dirtiest mirror, his boss says we're going to suspend you until we can sort this shit out. We're going to suspend you until we can sort this shit out. And if you're confused about the plot at all, remember this is a Seagal film. Which means any moment, Seagal's just going to tell us the plot. Like Roman does in every Fast and Furious movie. He's just going to say it out loud. So he kills his targets and their entire families to make himself look like the family man. So you think Frank Devereaux has something to do with this? I do, sir. And if you look at who controls that stuff on the black market, it's the Russian mafia. As in the guys who jumped us. There you go. We're caught up. And if you're a bad listener, the next scene just shows you the bad guys. Also, I'm not quite sure why they're both in robes. I'm not one to judge, but if I can say so, you guys make a pretty cute couple. I don't know why they made this scene. <laughs> Brian. Oh my god, you're looking right at us. This framing is so perfect. Brian, a lot of pool water's getting in your mouth, buddy. Now come on in. The water's fine. I love this movie. This movie's amazing. So they decide that Seagal and his partner know too much. Thankfully for them, Campbell's TV appears to be made by Motorola. Because that shit just explodes. <laughs> Even if this ninja wasn't here, his whole apartment just burned down. You know, me 15 minutes ago would have called bullshit on this guy surviving. But after watching Brian Cox swim, I don't care. I'm content. And these guys say they're from Internal Affairs. And they pick up Seagal. But then this guy lets his tattoo slip. And Seagal's like, fuck, it's the Russians! <laughs> then besides the fact that everything is just randomly exploding, I actually weirdly like this. Escaping out of an upside down car? That's actually kind of cool. Point Seagal. All right, and then there's some more plot. They found out somebody was calling somebody. It doesn't matter. All that matters is they track the number down to this girl because she somehow knows the dude who got killed, and she called him the night he got killed. Uh, how long have you known Dr. Dunleavy? I don't know any Dunleavy. I don't need a shrink. We never said he was a shrink. Okay, I knew him. That's all it took to break you? <laughs> dude, lie. Lie for longer. So now that they know who all's involved, they track down my favorite character. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about. Really? Single ah! action. The next place is your fault. Did you mean to do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that had to hurt. Game over. And Brian tells us what we need to know. The smuggling chemical weapons in from Russia. And then our boy calls the bad guy, and he does something super smart. He pits them against each other. Tom is your trigger man, isn't he? Donald's your trigger man, isn't he? I want him, not you. There's no way you came up with this on your own. Wait, hold on. Oh my god, they did this in executive decision. Steven, let it go, buddy. We've all moved on. It's time for you to move on, too. And of course the plan goes off without a hitch. Steven, I'm a little disappointed. I'm not surprised. Just disappointed. And while we have a gunfight, I have to tell a super quick story. According to the production team, there was a day after waiting a long time for Seagal to actually show up to set, which he was kind of known for just blowing people off. He appeared very late with a script in his hand, and he said it was the greatest script he has ever read in his entire life. And when they asked him who wrote it, he responded, I did. I wrote it. And that movie never came out, so... I mean, who knows? Maybe it was the best script. All right, so they get into one final big boss fight. Seagal apparently liked the block he used on this kick so much that he put it in this fight scene three times. I didn't copy and paste here. This is, this is what it looked like. 
I just really like blocking this guy's kick. Let's do more of those. Let's do more of those. Boring. Steven, did you think this was so cool you dubbed in your own voice saying boring? Even though your mouth is clearly not moving? Boring. All right, it's kind of cool. How are you going to follow it up? Some like super awesome flip or something? Or a kick to the nuts? Like, yeah, yeah, that works. God, he got you right on the schnoz. You going to take that? I'm just going to have to kill you. Yeah, get him. All right, yeah, this fight got sad real quick. It's just two old men hugging each other's necks. And then he throws them through a window, and that is the floppiest metal I've ever seen. Hey, if you're having a hard time staying, well, hard, I got a suggestion for you. How did dear penis? And then they kill the big boss. And his partner got hurt, and this firefighter, like, botched his bandage job because he's like, yeah, just one more piece of tape. I just, I'm going to put another piece of tape on just to be sure. And, you know, one, one more piece of tape. Now the roll's almost empty. I'm just going to finish it off. And we finally did it. That was technically two movies in one video. So you're kind of welcome. The next thing we're going to watch, according to IMDb, is an episode of Roseanne. Oh my God. Called Roseanne Bow. Roseanne battles a group of terrorists holding her family and a foreign diplomat hostage. I mean... If Steven Seagal doesn't show up, like, something's seriously wrong. Like, the bat signal must have been out that day. That's amazing. Maybe that'll take a whole episode, but maybe it'll be a double feature again. Because the next one is called Fire Down Below. That seems a little more our speed. But we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there. As always, thank you for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share it with friends. I'm really trying to gain some traction on this channel, so it is great to see it grow. If there's anything upcoming you want me to do, just put something down in the comments. And until that fateful day next Saturday, stay happy, stay healthy.